What does Grandmaster and In-N-Out Burgers have in common? They both put way too many freaking onions on your hamburger. No, I don't need a half of an onion. What are you doing? Also, neither of them are as good as anybody says. <gasps> Shout out Whataburger. What's up? But maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm wrong and I have bad taste. We'll find out because in this video, we're going over the good, the bad, mechanics, and a potential deck list for the news card in Marvel Snap, Grandmaster. In this installment of... Is it worth it? What's up, nerds? First things first, Grandmaster is a two energy, zero power card that reads on reveal, move one of your other on reveal cards here to the middle location. Its ability happens again. Overall impressions, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you know what I'm about to say here. He seems like a cheaper absorbing man, which would make you think he's better, but his condition I think is going to be a little weirder than people think. My suspicion is, yeah, there's, there's going to be some memes and some ridiculous plays with like Grandmaster and Eliath and stuff like that. But really, I think the, where he's going to find his home is in some sort of Mr. Negative list. And in that particular deck, I think he'll be all right. It's possible I'm biased. I don't really like combo centric cards, and this is definitely one. But let's move on to the mechanics of how Grandmaster will function. All right, first things up is movement is required with Grandmaster. If the thing he's trying to re-trigger can't move to the middle location, then Grandmaster will basically be a two energy, zero power, do nothing card. Wow. And uh, that, I mean, I can see that happening quite a bit. The second thing is if there's multiple cards at a location where you play Grandmaster, the game is just going to randomly decide which one moves to the middle. I initially thought that it would be the first card you played there because that's sort of how Invisible Woman works. Like with, like uh, for instance, if you have Dracula and Invisible Woman on the field first, uh, on the field at the same time, at the end of the game, the order of operations is gonna be whichever one you played first, basically. So I assumed that's how Grandmaster would work, but- That's not how it works. And last thing is if you re-trigger Grandmaster, um, say with Odin or Absorbing Man, I suppose, um, the movement is still going to be required and it's going to act just like you played your original Grandmaster. If you're re-triggering um, a, a play and moving something else to the middle, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of scenarios where you just don't have enough room on the board to move stuff around like that. All right, what are the good things about Grandmaster? Well, first thing, he seems fun. I I'm not going not gonna to lie. I don't like combo cards. I don't particularly like this card, but... Um, there's definitely going to be some Twitter posts the day after uh, Grandmaster comes out where, where people do ridiculous things. Just keep in mind that just because somebody did some absurd play with Grandmaster, it doesn't make him a good card to play every single game or to climb the ladder with. But that is the upside. If you're just into this game to have fun, Grandmaster is probably a solid card. The second thing is, um, I mean, this applies to a lot of cards, but I think specifically to Grandmaster a lot more than others is the longer this game goes on, the better he's going to get because what, like half of the cards that get uh, put into the game are on reveal. So every on reveal that gets introduced in a Marvel Snap um, has the ability to make Grandmaster not only better, but potentially super duper good. The third thing is he now don't get me wrong. I've kind of been talking shit on Grandmaster, but the third thing here is that if he's, if he's used correctly, he is and will have a very strong effect. Like a two energy absorbing man is a good card um, if you can meet his requirements. And if you have him in the correct deck or uh, in the correct scenarios, Grandmaster will make or break any given game. I just don't think it's going to be as frequent or as easy as uh, it seems. Now, the last good part of Grandmaster, and I think this is the major one, is for Mr. Negative decks, I think Grandmaster is actually a huge uh, bonus. Mr. Negative decks uh, are not known for being consistent, but with the release of Ravona and now um, Grandmaster, I think Mr. Negative decks are almost to a point where uh, if you don't play Mr. Negative on turn three, usually your, your Mr. Negative deck would just kind of suck. You're playing a bunch of crappy cards that have weak power and it's just not the best. You can't win games without playing Mr. Negative. Both Grandmaster now and Ravona and Zabu, I think Mr. Negative decks are going to have a pretty good chance of becoming much, much better and much more consistent because Grandmaster and effects like Grandmaster are going to allow Mr. Negative decks to win without actually having to play Mr. Negative. Sort of like it's got a decent fallback plan. So therefore the deck is no longer as, as much of a glass cannon as they usually are. Now the bad parts about 
Grandmaster. And the first one, it's a little weird, but combo required is my first point here. And what I mean by this is usually the cards that are really good in Marvel Snap don't need other cards to make them good, with the exception of like Darkhawk. But let's take Doctor Doom or Nebula, for example. Um, those cards are just good because when you play them, they do a good thing and uh, it's a powerful effect that you don't need anything else to make them better or as good as they are. With Grandmaster, it's a do nothing card unless you have the right scenario and have drawn the right sequence of cards from your deck. The second thing, uh, his conditions, the moving to the middle and having to play him on the left or the right and then the thing moving to the middle and then on revealing there. I think that's a lot weirder and going to be a little bit trickier than people think it is. What if the left or the right locations aren't playable or you don't want to play into them because they're super flow or something? Or what if the middle location is miniaturized lab or just sanctum sanctorum, whatever. There's just lots of scenarios in the game where the locations are, you're just like, well, I can't do what I was planning to do there. Well, if that happens a lot with like regular ass decks, say you're playing a Darkhawk deck, the locations do mess with how you play almost every game or at least how you play out your cards. Now picture that with a card that needs very specific scenarios to work properly. Um, I think the locations are really gonna mess up this card uh, more than it seems. The last point here is uh, it's only as good as the deck you're playing. Grandmaster's effect um, is basically other cards effects. So if you make a bad deck or you're not the best deck builder, or there's just a, not a good setup for Grandmaster in any, any given scenario, he's not going to make your deck work better. The other cards in it are going to make Grandmaster a better card, which kind of ties to the combo required thing um, and my Doctor Doom and Nebula analogy earlier. All right, on to a deck list. And um, if I had to play uh, Grandmaster in a deck, I would use something very similar to this. Uh, <laughs> Bleh, very similar to this or just a negative list with like white tiger and iron heart and wolfsbane but basically the idea here is you're a surfer deck that uses negative instead of sarah um you have a, a better high roll a little bit weaker of a of a standard baseline than the regular surfer decks here he's doing actually some pretty powerful stuff like I said, this type of deck, I think, is the place where Grandmaster is actually going to be super solid. We don't have Brood in here because Brood clogs up lanes. What does Grandmaster want? Wide open spaces. So instead of Brood, we have Hit Monkey or Wolfsbane, whichever, either one. But basically, we don't have Brood to save board space. Grandmaster copying Ironheart, Wolfsbane, Hit Monkey, um, Silver Surfer, all of those are really powerful effects. Uh, especially if we have Wong, you do Wong into your Silver Surfer or Ironheart, and then you Grandmaster and move that thing into the middle and, and trigger it again. If you have Wong and Wolfsbane and Ironheart, or Wong and Ironheart and Silver Surfer, like all in the same lane there, and then you play uh, Grandmaster into that Wong lane, it's going to trigger twice and move both of those things to the middle and just pop off. Grandmaster could do some really cool things in this type of deck, for sure. All right, on to my recommendation on whether or not you should get Grandmaster. Well, to start, he's 6k tokens. That's a lot, especially for a combo card that, honestly, you can't really tell if he's going to be super duper great or not. Uh, I'm a little down on him just because he's not my style of card. I, I will admit that there are going to be scenarios and situations where Grandmaster is a very powerful card and a very powerful effect. So I think this boils down to what kind of a player are you and also are you rich? As far as tokens go, if you have like 6k tokens and you're just, they're burning a hole in your pocket um, and you also love Odin, Wong, Mr. Negative, um, White Tiger is just your favorite card in the game, then yeah, I would suggest getting Grandmaster. Also, if you just want to have fun, um, if you just like doing ridiculous, stupid things for the sake of it, Grandmaster is your card. So yeah, I would say for tokens, yeah, sure, if that's your thing. Now, if you're just trying to be a spike, it's a magic term, basically. If you're just trying to play the best decks at all times, you don't really care about doing big, silly, fun things, um, then I think you can easily pass on Grandmaster as far as tokens go. I don't think he's really going to change the meta. Uh, I do think he's going to make Mr. Negative a lot, a lot better, but when has Mr. Negative ever won a tournament or been at the top of the meta? The answer is never, never, ever. Now, as far as the spotlight cash goes, 
Um, if you don't have Loki and you also kind of want Grandmaster, then I would open uh, these spotlight caches. I think Hit Monkey sort of just doesn't matter. I think Hit Monkey is here because Second Dinner has a tendency to put one card that synergizes with the new card. So it would be Hit Monkey and Grandmaster. They're like, oh, these two cards are pretty good together. Uh, so yeah. I think Hit Monkey is sort of relevant here. If you don't have Loki and you also sort of want Grandmaster, open the spotlight caches, use your keys. If you are on the fence of, of Grandmaster, you already have Loki, I say save and wait and see what some what some of the good uh, deck builders do. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Check out my sweet clothes in the description below. Uh, member channels get 10% off always. Bye. Never ever!